Ashling Drury Byrne and I teach cello in the academy and I'm going to focus on some basic technical things, the, my favourite things, uh, how the bow works and it's a, so quite playful really some of the things and um, I have brought a bow that I've stuck on corn cushions on because the bow is the same weight either end. We call that the balance point. So the bow is the same weight, this side and this side. So for beginners, it's much easier if you buy these corn cushions, you can buy them in the chemist with a little hole, and you just stick it on and you put your thumb there and let the fingers fall over. And that means the bow is easy. There's the same, it's the same weight either end. So they're brilliant for the children because you don't have any problem then with the weight of the bow. The children learn to get a straight bow from day one. It makes a big difference. So the corn cushions, you put them at the balance point. And this is always fun too for children. You can use two fingers or one finger to see where the balance point is. And that's fun for children to know the bow is the same weight up to the tip as the heel. We call this the heel and the tip. And then we put the, when they're more advanced or the adult, you can put the corn cushion where the bow is held. So two corn cushions, sometimes they get dirty and they fall off, you just put new ones on. Um, when you put your thumb on the corn cushion, let the middle two fingers fall over the bow so that we have a nice deep hold and we hold the first finger with just the top joint. So the same thing back there, nice deep hold. I'm even, my fingers are even going to get a bit grubby from the rosin or I'll dirty the bow, it doesn't matter. For cello, it's nice to have what we call a deep hold, deep hold. So then we put the bow in the string and we have to pull the string. We're pulling the string this way and we're pulling the string that way with the hair on the bow. So I'll do this from the balance point because this is the easiest way for beginners to learn how to use the bow. So. <laughs> for the bow is not heavy. Now the rules of the bow arm are at the heel of the bow high wrist low elbow. After the balance point we lift the elbow for leverage. The up bow is mirror image to the down bow. shoulder so you're holding up the bow at the heel because the bow is heavy now I'm not at the heel but that doesn't matter I'm just because it makes it easier for you um, so I'll do it again at the heel of the bow high wrist low elbow because I'm holding up the bow a bit like a crane is holding it up and then we set off on our down bow same as the down bow and when we get to the balance point we have to let down the elbow and the shoulder. This is an ideal way to begin playing the cello for adults or children because the bow is not heavy and then after a while you can move your hand back to the playing position where I've also put a little sticker, a corn cushion. And now the bow is much heavier. So I'm holding the wrist up at the heel of the bow, high wrist, low elbow. I start doing a down bow. After the balance point, elbow comes up for leverage. A bow, mirror image of can see and we let down the elbow and the shoulder. So this is the balance point. 
So holding the bow in the normal position here, put the corn pad somewhere here, on the little corner there where the black meets the stick, where the ebony meets the stick. I'll start again. So at the heel of the bow, high wrist, low elbow. After the balance point, which is here, elbow comes up for a little leverage if you want to lean. Up bow, the same as down bow. We say mirror image. And when you get to the balance point, where the corn pad is, we let down the elbow and the shoulder. So I'm holding up the bow at the heel. I could do this all day. There's no strain, because I'm holding up the weight of the bow. Now I do it a little faster, so you see the look of the arm. The down bow is very easy. We're just opening out the wing. We call it bird's wings. If you look at a bird in a park, in a pond, they fly and they land on the water and they immediately tuck up their wings. We've the same, exactly the same thing. We lift the arm and then we have to fold it back again. And the wrist takes over the weight of the bow. Now, I'll go back to it again in a minute. But we have a little game, um, game here. First of all, the bow has to be parallel to the bridge. So we call that good train tracks. The bridge is one train track, the bow is the other. You can see the bridge. And my bow is parallel to the bridge. This is so you get a beautiful tone. If the bow is what we call straight bow, parallel to the bridge, we get a beautiful sound. Because the rule is the string is like that and the bow has to be like that. That's just a rule in playing. String straight down, the bow like that, like a cross. So I'll do it again. holding a tennis racket or a hockey or a hurley stick, you just hold it very simply. But whatever way you hold the bow, remember the straight bow and the train tracks. The train tracks, because that's essential for getting a beautiful sound. train tracks. Now next thing, if you want to have a steady bow at the bow change, meaning at the tip of the bow or the heel of the bow, you will probably notice I've just just got quiet. I slowed the bow and I got a little quieter. Call the bow change at the tip or the heel. But there's another way which is magic, particularly for children. You say the leprechaun, the little leprechaun is sitting on the bow, drinking his soup, and he has a beautiful suit on and a beautiful frilly shirt. And he's dressed in his green shiny suit and a frilly shirt, a white shirt. And we don't want him to spill his soup. So, we have to watch him. He doesn't want to spill his soup. So we just go very steady. Ooh, he mustn't spill his soup. So when we're changing at the heel, ooh, watch the leprechaun. He doesn't want to spill his soup. And that's a magic little game just works like a dream with anyone, any age, because immediately you go really gently here so that there's no wobble in the bow at the heel. There's one more thing. Um, when we play on each string, the strings are all at a little different angle. So for the 
C string, we say we're in a lift in a hotel and we're on the ground floor. Then we press a buzzer, the children press a buzzer to go to the first floor. The arm comes up. That's the next string, the G string. Press the buzzer for the next floor and the arm comes up. Press the buzzer for the top floor and the arm comes up. This is getting the, the lifting and the angle of the arm to make a beautiful sound. Thank you for watching the video. I hope you got some helpful tips and keep an eye on the RIAM Teaching Network for more videos. Thank <laughs> you.